Can my Microsoft Surface Book edit podcasts? Let's dive in and find out. In this video today, I'm going to go through the three steps I do when putting a podcast together on my Microsoft Surface Book. First step is always to actually find out about the interviewee itself. So in this case, I'm interviewing Jan or Jan Ilunga. He's an absolute podcasting legend. He's been around in the podcasting game for a long time. And this podcast that I'm actually putting together right now is about how to build a list using podcasts. And Jan was the only guy I could really turn to. So I knew a bit about him already, but there's nothing like going to someone's about page to find out a bit more about them. You can see that he's a podcast consultant, so I'm definitely in the right place. And he also runs the world's biggest podcast summit, so fantastic. A couple of points I can really pick on when I'm putting the questions together, and I can touch on what other people have said about him and all that kind of stuff. So after I've got an idea, like a background information, if I haven't talked to them before, or generally I've talked to them, I put together this document in Microsoft Word, share it on Office 365, send it over to my interviewee. A couple of notes to start off, letting them know, you know what they should be aware of, when to turn up, all the rest. And then I actually go through and I give them, put the questions in, but I put some background around those questions, just so people understand what, you know, why I'm gonna be asking those questions. Obviously the next step is to go and record the podcast itself but I'm not going to concentrate on that here because that's there's so many things involved in that. And I'll come back and do another video how I do that on my Surface another time. But the main part of this video is about how you edit a podcast and can my Surface really handle it. So I've opened up Adobe Audition here. Or leads and acquire new customers. And I've actually got sort of the basics of this project already put together. But what I need to do is edit the actual audio recording, the main interview recording between uh, Jan and I that we did on Skype. So the first thing is I'll bring it in. Generally the way that I, I do recordings, as I said I'll do another video on this, but I'll do recordings where you've got a left and right channel because the microphone should be in mono anyway. So um, I split the channels. So you've got Jan's side on the right here. And we'll just zoom in to now my side and hear what it sounds like. So, welcome to the Fridge Podcast, Jan. How are you doing? Absolutely awesome. And it's been really fun just chatting to you just before the podcast started about, uh, you know, traveling to different places and how you've potentially been influenced by so many different countries. It's really nice to meet someone else that, you know, has traveled a bit and all around the world. But So there we go. We know what the original now sounds like. And now what I'm actually going to do to this file to make it sound better. First thing I always do is pretty much get a noise sort of print of it, let's say. And it's just on the static background noise that pretty much every, every recording setup has some kind of background noise. And using Audition, I can actually just select the entire file. I do a really, really light reduction on it. So welcome to the Fridge Podcast, Jan. How are you doing? Absolutely awesome, and it's been really fun just chatting. So there you can see, just edit that down, bang that effect through, it only took a couple of seconds to do an entire minute or so. And you can suddenly see that the, the file just doesn't have that background static in. Next thing I'll do is basically a noise gate. So anything under a certain decibel level, depends on the file, but in this case, there was just a tiny bit of noise under about the 55 decibel mark. So I want to just gate that out. So it also takes away when people are breathing and that kind of thing. You can just take away those nasty like intakes of air that you sometimes hear. Absolutely awesome. And it's been really fun just chatting to you just before the podcast started about, uh, you know, traveling to different places and how you've potentially been influenced by so many different countries. It's really nice to meet someone else that, you know, has traveled a bit and all around the world. But before we even get into the podcast, you've you've learned so many languages. What was what's been the process of learning those languages? How how have you gone about learning five languages in your life? And you can just see on the before and after meter there that there was a, a bit less sound just after I finished breathing. The breathing had disappeared from the, the audio. So next I'm gonna to go to Jan's recording. 
I, th I think the key is... So I've got to now baseline what it sounds like. Is being from Switzerland because... <laughs> uh, yeah, because we have four... Not many people actually know this, but in Switzerland we have four national languages. And I come... So we have 26 regions and I come from the... So you can see, again, I've just put a noise gate on Jan's voice, just takes out some of the breathing after he speaks. One of two regions when people talk Italian. So in all other 24 regions, people don't speak Italian. I come from one of those two where we do. So that's my, that's my mother tongue Italian. So that's where my funny Macroni accent comes from. So growing up, I... So there you can go, you can see the surfaces handling this absolutely fine. All of their frequency analysis, all those more complicated things, it's showing me that perfectly. Now I'm just putting an EQ on Jan's voice. He actually had a really nice microphone, so there's no huge issues there. I just generally take out the cheap frequency at 800 hertz, just take that down 10 decibels and uh, do a low cut as well. So this is what it sounds like afterwards. Really start. You know, we kind of had to learn at least French. We start with French in elementary school and then with German in secondary school. And then I think we start with English also in secondary school. And since I continued with my studies, I continued with the languages. And for almost five years now, I've been living in Helsinki, Finland. So that's where the, the fifth language comes in, which is Finnish. So I speak Italian, English, French, German and Finnish. But I think the key really when it comes to languages is to keep practicing because I can tell you since I've been living here for example French and German I haven't really been using those so much and I can tell that yeah my my speaking skills and writing skills have definitely are a bit trusty let's say <laughs> so something else I'm going to do very quickly is just put a compressor at the very top of his voice. This just helps control some of the uneven bumps and also just means I can put the volume up just a tiny bit. You don't want to do this too much, but you can see how the surface just chews through it very quickly and sorts out pretty much the entire process in a couple of seconds. Absolutely awesome. And so I'm going to head back over to my file, my side of the recordings. And I'm actually going to put similar AQ, minus 800 Hertz and just take out the very bottom end and just compress it a tiny bit as well. It's been really fun just chatting to you just before the podcast started about, uh, you know, traveling to different places and how you've potentially been influenced by so many different countries. It's really nice to meet someone else that, you know, has traveled a bit and all around the world. But before we even get into the podcast, you've you've learned so many languages. What was What's been the process of learning those languages? How, how have you gone about learning five languages in your life? So there you go. I've just applied the, the effects to my entire uh, recording, let's say. And I'm just going to drop them into the session itself. And there's about six or seven tracks in this session. And you can see that the Surface Book is handling this just fine. I'm just moving a few sound effects around and we should be good to go. Podcast with Jan. So, welcome to the Fridge Podcast. So what I'm going to do now is just save the entire thing as a mix down and that's my entire podcast done in about 20 minutes. I've shortened it on this video to about 10, but the actual editing is that fast. The Surface Book really helped out and it's just bouncing the entire thing out with all six tracks in about three minutes. All I need to do now is just upload it to my podcast server, publish it on the internet and I'm away really. So the Surface has really handled this absolutely fine. It's really nice to not be sort of stuck with the actual laptop I'm using to edit these things. And you can see that it just chews through all the processing time really quickly, makes it really easy. 
and hopefully this video has also shown you some of the effects that I put in my podcast that might help you when you do your podcast as well. Overall, I've just got to give it up to the surface for being really helpful through this. And if you've got any questions about what I do over at Fridge or um, how I go about editing the podcast and maybe how I use the surface to do that, leave them down in the comments below. And I'm more than happy to dive in, help you out and share any of the knowledge that I built up over the last six, seven years editing audio in general and podcasts as well. So hopefully I can help. Thank you very much for watching and I will catch you very soon.